how to use a table saw. Three points of inspection. I'm going to check the motor and housing on the back side. I'm going to check for any damage. I'm going to make sure the belt is on. I'm going to look for any missing pieces. I'm also going to check the cord, which is on the back side. Check it for frays or damage. I'm also going to check the blade. I'm going to pull up the guard. I'm going to spin the blade and look at it. Make sure it's not warped. Not too, too many teeth have broken out of it. Now when I get ready to use it, I'm gonna make sure I have my PPE, make sure I have my shoes on, and sometimes you might wanna wear earmuffs if you do a lot of cutting with this, it gets pretty loud. I'm gonna ensure that it's unplugged before I make any adjustments and setup, because I have to actually set the saw to what I wanna cut. Normally with any other saws, you draw on your material, and then you bring the saw to the material and cut. In this scenario, you set up the saw and then bring the material to it. I'm gonna set my blade depth. I've got a piece of three-quarter stock here, so I'm going to set it a quarter of an inch deeper than my stock. The kind of rule of thumb is I can align it to the edge of the blade, and I want to see that my teeth are just poking up through it. And this is done by, as I showed you earlier, the blade depth. I'm looking up here at the height of my blade as it pokes out the wood. And I'm gonna loosen the knob a little bit and crank it down so only about a quarter of an inch sticks out past my wood. About a quarter of an inch, a little bit less than the, the blade teeth protruding from the top of the wood. That's the difference between losing your hands or not. Now I'm gonna set my fence. I wanna rip a piece that's two inches wide. We use table saws to make rip cuts. It has a measuring guide on it, but it's pretty wore out. So what I'll use is a tape measure and I'll place this part against the fence and then I'll look at the two inch line and line it up with my blade. You can see that I've rested the end of the tape measure against the fence, and the two-inch line lines up with this side of the blade, the right side of the blade, because it's going to take an eighth of an inch curve out of whatever you cut. Now I use the handle here to lock it down, and I double check to make sure it hasn't moved, because sometimes the fence will move. Now I'm gonna plug it in and turn it on. As I showed you earlier, this tool has a two-stage turn on. Master on-off switch, you turn it to on, and you watch the lights blink back and forth till the red light quits. If it doesn't quit, it means you have a problem. A lot of times you turn it on and something's blinking. It means either the fuse is need, the reset needs to be tripped or the brains in this thing's been tripped. To turn it on and off, simply pull the paddle out and to turn it off, you push it back in. And as you hear, it takes a second or two for it to quit turning. Now when I get ready to cut, since I'm making such a small cut, it's within the red zone of the saw. I'm gonna actually use a pair of push sticks and you can use any scrap that you can find. They actually make really fancy ones, but they tend to disappear around here. So I'm actually gonna use a pair of push sticks, almost like chopsticks. And I'm gonna start it with my hand and use the push stick to hold it down and to hold it toward the fence. My focal point is right here along the fence. 
I'm not necessarily watching the blade because what will happen is you cut, the wood's going to want to come off the fence at different angles and it'll, it'll make for a crooked cut. So my focus is on sliding this piece of wood right along the edge of the fence the entire time. Another thing that you always have to do with a table saw is when you cut, you have to push your wood, whatever you're cutting, completely through. Never pull back. That's where you get what's called a kickback, where the blade, or whatever you're cutting, will grab the blade will grab a hold to it, and it's spinning and it throwing it towards you. It will actually come back and hit you right in the body, about as fast as a fastball out of a pitcher. So I'm gonna put, I'm gonna turn it on. I'm gonna make a complete cut with push sticks, push it all the way through. Then I'm gonna turn it off. At this point, you make sure you push your wood all the way through past the dog. Now I can cut it off. I can either touch it with my hand or bump it with my leg. I'm done, I'm gonna turn the master power off and unplug it. Now I'm ready to maintenance. Just like everything else, I'm gonna make sure it's clean and dry. This thing collects a lot of sawdust. We have to blow these things off regularly, especially on the inside. I'm gonna pull the guard up and clean all down in here with the air hose once it builds up a little bit. And I'm also gonna check the blade. I'm gonna spin it toward me a little bit and I'm looking down the line of the blade to make sure it's not warped or bent out of alignment. That is how to use a table saw.